This is Reiner with Pacific Coast Hobbies, and the, we are going over the DJI 450 with the GPS. Um, as you see, with this guy, I went ahead and I put the LED lights in the front, now just to give reference for the front. Even during the daytime, it works really well. You can see it really well because uh, sometimes when you're flying, it's, you can lose reference really easy. The great thing about the GPS, a beginner can fly this. It's super solid. Let's go over some of the uh, setups since last time we spoke. We had version 1.2 and it jumped up to 1.6. So right here on mounting, you can see that it has a new area here where you go ahead and put your um, settings for your GPS. Here I put down for the X, negative 3, and negative 3 for Y, and for Z axis I have 13 centimeters. That's about average. Most people say 12, 13. But um, that's that little stick that it comes with, and that's the height that you go ahead and that's the number you go ahead and enter that in. Going down to the motor mix, we are using the F450, so we have it under the quad rotor X, and we just go ahead and we put under recommend for the motor idle speed. Now for the transmitter calibrations, the same rules apply that when you first start off with the calibration, you want to go ahead and push the start, make sure everything is moving to the right. If you push your trim tabs up, it should move to the right. Since this is a DX8, you're going to notice that it says normal reverse, normal reverse. That's what you want to go ahead and put it as for your DX8. Uh, your receiver type, we have it under tradition, and cutoff type, we have it under intelligent. This gives you a, a three second uh, throttle, so if, once you get it initiated and you don't touch it, after three seconds, it will shut off on its own. Once you do initiate and you bring the throttle up a little bit, it will continue. And also when you land, um, it will continue to spin for three seconds and then it would automatically shut off. Now going to the sticks monitor, you see X1, X2. That's basically auxiliary one, auxiliary two. Um, when you go ahead and set this up within your NASA and your um, receiver, that's how we go ahead and, and set it up. In the instructions, it tells you to go ahead and put um, U as aux one. To us, just makes more sense to go ahead and push X one as auxiliary one and X two as auxiliary two, and U should be your gear switch. And that's how we set up all of our stuff. Now, for X one, you will notice that we have it set up for um, actually aux three on the DX8. You'll see here we have the trim tab up here, a knob, and we'll go into that later on. That little beep right there is telling you your zero calibration. Aux 2 is set up for your heading setting. So again, we'll go into that later as we go down further. And then for your gear, we got it set up to two different functions. Here you'll notice that it goes from the GPS to your attitude to manual. But we also did a function in here with your took the gear switch and we put it to it's an automatic fail safe. And it's a great feature because as you notice I was in GPS, I flicked it, fail safe. Attitude, flick it, fail safe. Go to manual, flick it, fail safe. So fail safe will work in any mode. It basically overrides your GPS attitude and manual switch. A great feature and what that really does when you have your GPS, it gives you the capability to return to home. And we'll go into that later. We got some footage for that for you. Autopilot. So here with the pitch, we put it 200%, roll 200%, yaw 100%, and vertical 100%. Um, these are all can be manipulated to what you want. We just suggest that you go ahead and just change them. 10% at a time, just out of a safety feature. I really would not touch the vertical. 100% is where that's the maximum you really want because you do that more, you, you have uh, the possibility of it just taking off on you on throttle up. Um, now, added to gain, you'll see here that it's at 82% or at 80%. And then right underneath it, it says remote adjust. It says X1, X1, which really means that we have auxiliary one for both of them. And again, we set it up to its at auxiliary three. 
So basically what that does is that it allows you to go ahead and adjust your attitude gain while it's flying by you adjusting this knob. So if it's too aggressive or not, you could have the capability to go ahead and adjust it instead of you thinking, oh, maybe I should put that up to 10% or 20% and then coming back and adjust it. It gives you that capability to be out on the field and see what's really going to make your copter fly that much better. Um, underneath it, you'll see enhanced fail-safe methods. Well, one of the greatest features of this is that it can, has the capability to come home. So we go ahead and do the go home and landing. Um, what that does is that when you take off, there's six satellites that finds its position. So when you take off, it knows that position. When you go ahead and fly around, you flick that fail-safe switch, it will go ahead, climb an altitude of 60 feet, it will come over to the point where you took off, hover for 15 seconds, and then descend to where you took off. Now, underneath that, we see we have intelligent orientation control, and it's checked, and that is for auxiliary two. And that's one of the few switches we don't adjust and manipulate. We leave AUX2 alone on the receiver, the DX8. So you see, when you have it flicked up all the way, it's off, course lock, and home lock. What this means is that course lock, if you are making the heading of going north and you go ahead and put course lock, you're locking that north course as a lock. So what gets weird is that if you go ahead and you change your direction and you push forward, it's still going to go north. It's a little tricky to play around with, but it's definitely fun. And so if when you do your home lock, your home location is going to be your heading. Play around with it. And for me, I really don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me why I would use it personally, but that's just me. Gimbal. Um, at this time, we are not using the gimbal, so we do have it off. But once you get your gimbal going, these are all the adjustments. You see with the pitch is F2 and the roll F2. So um, these are what you're going to go ahead and set it up to. And then down here where it says manual control speed, you can see where it's under X1, which, would, which is the auxiliary one. Um, again, you can adjust all of these once you, it's turned on. And the voltage, we go ahead and we turn this on and basically it has two settings here for your protection. It gives you a first level warning, which it starts blinking, and then once you're pretty much in critical, it starts blinking red. Um, that's when you just you have to come back home right away before it crashes. Up here where it says uh, battery, if you decide to go ahead and move your battery level to a four cell LiPo, you need to change it in here. Um, you can see where it gives you the capability up to a 6, 6S LiPo. Um, start off with a 3S unless you know what you're doing. You, and also with the 3S, uh, you do use the larger size blades. You use 10 inch blades. And if you do a 4 cell LiPo battery, you need to use the 8 inch blades. And that is pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about settings on your DX8 on how we went ahead and set up your gear switch, your AUX1, and your AUX2. All right, we're going to go over the DX8 for the GPS on your DJI F450 and 550 models. Uh, this is the quickest way to go ahead and utilize your seven channels for your GPS. First thing you want to do is that you pull this button down and turn it on. And what we're going to go ahead and do is adjust the switch select. There's a few things that we go ahead and adjust. Uh, first thing you want to do is that you want to make this that your gear inoperable. Once you do that then your F mode gear will be enabled. Now, go ahead and you can go ahead and select, select gear in your F mode and then for a knob get that to AUX1 and AUX2 we leave alone. It's still AUX2. Once you get those settings, go ahead and push list, scroll up to the main menu, and it will get you into your normal settings. So to tell you in short what we're doing with all these settings, we basically said that your gear switch, which right here, is now F mode. 
um, in the original 1.2 version, you only had the two selections, which was attitude and manual. Now that we have GPS in the mix, we have GPS, attitude, and manual. But what we're going to go ahead and do is add the gear switch to be your failsafe. So whatever mode you are in, you put that into failsafe mode. That overrides all that, and that activates your GPS to go ahead and have the return to home function. It's a pretty cool feature to see it work. So with that being said, um, we're going to also go over, show you the other two switches. Aux 2 is Aux 2, and then we went ahead and switched Aux 3 to Auxiliary 1. Aux 1 is basically what we set up on the computer you have it so when you adjust your attitude you can go ahead and turn up your attitude or turn it down we liked it when you hear that beep that's your zero balance for the calibration we set it up as 80 we found 80% is really good for the 450 90% uh, for the 550 but if you're not you know satisfied with that it gives you the capability to turn up your attitude gain up or attitude gain down now once we got through that go ahead and click on this button we're going to go into servo setup down to gear and you'll notice that it's 85 percent and 85 percent and you can see here that it does adjust and that's basically your GPS attitude and manual these are your basic numbers that we are found out that works really well. Now the other part that we had to go ahead and do is play with the mixing. Now mixing, you want to go ahead and go into mix one, select it, and if you go ahead and use these settings, the gear, gear, rate, negative 60%, negative 100%, your offset 40%, your trim at inoperable, and then the switch gear one. Basically, what you have done is created this to be fail safe. So now your gear switch is now fail safe for your F mode, which again is your GPS, attitude, and manual. All right, we got our home location set here for the DJI 450 with the GPS. Uh, we're here, we're just going to do the return to home testing. So I'm going to go ahead and engage it and do a couple flybys. You can see where our home location is. And I'm actually going to take it a little bit further away. Bring it down. I'm going to go ahead and engage my failsafe. Engage my failsafe. And now what this is doing is figuring it out. It's going to get its coordinates. It's going to climb up 60 feet. It will go over to the home location, hover for 15 seconds, and then it takes about a half a minute to one minute to go ahead and descend. So you see it's still climbing and then it's coming over to its home location where we originally took off. found its home location. It will hover there for 15 seconds. And now it starts its, its, its descent.